Let's talk now about uh, with Kevin Mon, President and Chief Investment Officer of Henyon and Walsh Asset Management. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, sir. Okay, so let's Happy talk holiday. about let's talk about how far we've come and how fast. Is it too far, too fast, or is the market ahead of itself in overestimating how much relief is coming from the Fed, or does it have it right? The markets rallied significantly in November as investors came to the belief that we've reached the end of this rate hike cycle. That belief was only validated in December once Chair Powell all but confirmed that, yes, we're at the end of this rate hike cycle. And we continue to see the markets move a little bit higher. I believe a large part of that is FOMO, fear of missing out on the next leg up of this market rally. However, I do believe that markets have rallied too high, too fast. And some of those gains that we were expecting in 2024 have likely now been pulled forward into 2023, which creates the potential for more market volatility during the early stages of 2024, when this long-awaited economic slowdown finally materializes and investors start to realize the potential pains of an economic slowdown, which will ultimately lead to the Fed cutting rates towards the second half of next year. So how important is it for this level of the market that the Fed deliver the rate cuts on time as the market anticipates in March? What if the, you know, March comes and goes and the Fed says, no, you had that wrong? I, I believe the Fed isn't going to cut in March. I'm in the contrarian camp, I guess now. I believe they're likely to cut towards the end of the second quarter. But the market is expecting rate cuts to the tune of somewhere between 1% and one and a quarter percent. The Fed's dot plot told us that it's going to be around 75 basis points next year. But if the forecast for an economic slowdown do come to fruition, and as it stands right now, the Fed is forecasting GDP growth to slow to 1.4% next year and stay below 2% in 2025. You know as well as I do, the Fed doesn't cut rates when the economy is doing well. They cut rates right. when the economy isn't doing well. So I believe that those rate cuts need to take place towards the second half of the year. And if they don't, that will catch the market by surprise and lead to a pullback. So is that pullback, in your opinion, a buying opportunity? I do believe that would be a buying opportunity. Ultimately, the Fed is going to have to cut rates. Their hand is going to be forced by the extent of this economic slowdown. Remembering, of course, if they keep rates too high for too long, that puts more pressure on the U.S. consumer that accounts for 70 percent of our economic growth and now has over a trillion dollars on their credit cards facing credit card interest rates above 24 percent, which is the highest on record, according to LendingTree. So they're so, going to have to ease. That creates the buying opportunity in both stocks and bonds. And I would argue create a rally of the rest beyond just those magnificent seven stocks that rallied in 2023. Yeah, let, let's talk about that, Kevin. How would you position yourself for what you believe to be the broadening of the market? Um, one idea that I've heard is going into a a balanced S&P rather than the cap-weighted S&P. What are some of your thoughts on that? Certainly. You can even look at the NASDAQ 100 index as a guide for what worked in 2023, didn't work in 2022, and is likely to work in 2024. That's actually equally weighting those magnificent stocks that are within the NASDAQ 100 and likely to provide growth to the U.S. economy, but probably trading at too excessive evaluations. We also like other areas of technology beyond just generative AI. I certainly believe in the transformative capabilities of AI, but what's been lost in this AI race is the importance of cybersecurity. And you can make a very valid argument that the growth of artificial intelligence will only increase the likelihood and the success rates of cyber attacks. So cybersecurity is going to become of paramount importance. And names such as Fortinet, CrowdStrike, CyberArk, provide those types of defenses for individuals and corporations, and I think present opportunities for investors in the new year.